All right, so question of the day. Why are women crazy? Which women? You? I mean, I feel like I can't be the only person that is realizing right now that in the press and the stories that we're reading, this seems to be the year of the crazy women. I mean, I know in Chinese Zodiac, it's the year of the dragon, but in America, it feels like maybe women were pretending to be sane for a while, but now they're just going all out and going bonkers. And it's all just sort of being revealed. So women were never sane. We were just pretending to be. Statements like this lead people to take women less seriously because she's basically painting all women from the early 1900s to today as not worth listening to. Except herself, of course. You know, for example, yesterday we, of course, covered notoriously Kim Kardashian, who had us believing for almost two decades that she was a victim. Oh, I'm scared. I'm a victim of pornography. No, actually, she was the perpetrator of pornography, her own pornography, herself as an actress in a porn film. Candace, women in porn films can be victimized by the experience, even if they supposedly choose it. Also, of course, this year, who could forget the Amber Heard scaries, the Amber Heard, I'm so scared, I'm a victim, Johnny Depp, hashtag me too, hashtag time's up, hashtag give me a way to promote myself even further and give me all these opportunities on the red carpet, hashtag just kidding, I'm a liar, a little bit of a psychopath, a little gone girl, I actually, I was, you know, I was bludgeoning Johnny Depp. And then aside from bludgeoning Johnny Depp, I was then threatening him that he was basically a wimp if he told anybody about it. There's a growing pool of info out there suggesting that this may not be exactly what happened, which I put in the video description along with my Venmo, BlackSwan88, in case you want to donate. Though keep in mind, no one knows the full truth except the two people involved. Also, regardless of whether Amber Heard is guilty... Many who criticized her were driven by misogyny and they used misogynistic tactics in language, which Johnny Depp did not stop or discourage. So there's that. So, yeah, that's a thing I feel this year, that women are just being outwardly crazy. Not all of them, of course, not me. So Candace Owens' relationship with womanhood in a nutshell. Not me, just other women. Of course, but of course. <laughs> other women seem to be on their eve. I mean, Adam and Eve, I'm talking. Ugh. They are doing a lot of clinically insane things. And so I started thinking Citation about this topic needed. and I wanted to see if there were symptoms that we could identify of maybe this chick is crazy. I mean, what do all of these crazy chicks have in common? They disagree with you. What do they have in common? And here is what... I realize there are four things you should look out for. Number one, she's feminist AF. I'm a feminist. I'm a feminist, guys. I don't do anything bad. I love women. I'm here to support women. Number two, did I mention I'm a feminist? Because, like, I'm a feminist. I'm definitely a feminist. While there are women out there who overuse this term and use it as a get-out-of-jail-free card... I feel like Candace here just clearly doesn't like feminism. You know, the thing that allows her to have this podcast in the fucking first place. Number three, she overutilizes the word attack. It felt like an attack. What I would say is I was attacked. We must stop these attacks. Like, I just, I don't know why this in their little dictionary of crazy is a word they are told to use. I do think they're all being passed around a dictionary, and that word attack, you will see all the time. You'll hear it. Yeah, I agree to an extent, but you use the word crazy in the same manner, so... A lot. Number four, you will realize that she's in a lot of problematic relationships. She just seems to have trouble with productive relationships. Yeah, but unless she's the perpetrator, this says nothing about her. Kind women who are getting targeted will hear this episode and they're going to think they're crazy, just like their abuser wants them to. Thanks a lot, Candace. So I want to really underscore this point about the year of the crazy woman by pointing to some recent cultural examples that keep popping up in the press that I want you to be paying attention to. Number one, Olivia Wilde. What do you know about Olivia Wilde? Well, I'll tell you. The first thing you need to know is that Olivia Wilde is a feminist. And if you didn't know she was a feminist, check this picture out of her wearing a shirt that says feminist. 
okay? And in case this shirt is not making clear that she's a feminist, she also, once upon a time, wore this skirt. And the skirt, if you can't read it and you're listening to this podcast, it says, feminist, 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 hey, hello? It's like 300 times around the skirt in case you missed it. Olivia Wilde is a feminist. And Yeah, I get the point here. I kind of do, but... Yeah, some people are too conspicuous with their politics, but Candace does the same thing with the White Lives Matter t-shirt. So there's that. In case you are someone who only speaks English, she also wore this. Yes, that is Olivia Wilde wearing a shirt that in French reads Solidarité Feminine. I don't know if I'm saying that right because I don't speak French, but I'm pretty sure it means that she's a feminist. Candace, you're with the French call Les Incompetents. And in case that wasn't abundantly clear to you that she was a feminist, just check her out wearing this pussy hat. Yeah. So I'm embarrassed to say it's even taken oh, me this long to post a video, but my gosh, is Kachava the... Yeah, there she is. There she is. She's a feminist, guys. And it's pink because girls like pink. She's a feminist. Okay, so you've heard me talk about how important it is to have a VPN to protect your online privacy, but choosing the right VPN is equally as important. I like to research my sponsors, and I only recommend brands to my listeners that I actually believe in and use, and I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market, and here is why. Number one, ExpressVPN doesn't log to VPN, the number one VPN in the world. So protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust. You can use my link expressvpn.com slash Candice today. And get an extra three months free on a one-year package. I said skip, That's damn expressvpn, it. expressvpn, E-X-P-R-E-S-S, slash Candice. Visit expressvpn.com slash Candice to learn more. Now, of course, like yeah, all we know, we good have a feminists, button. Olivia sometimes gets attacked by men. And she usually likes to get attacked by men when she's trying to further her career. I'd be very careful with this. Yeah, it can look a bit suspicious, especially as someone who's a bit familiar with how Hollywood works. But let's say she is getting attacked and now you've said this. Well, what sort of pickle does that put her in now? Like, that's just not fair to make that assumption. So Olivia Wilde had a long relationship. She has two children and about a 10-year relationship with an actor named Jason Sudeikis. And it was convenient for her. She had a movie that she was directing and producing that is called Don't Worry, Darling. And in wanting to do press for this movie, it was convenient for her that she was going through this separation with Jason Sudeikis. And a processor served her papers while she was at uh, Comic-Con, I believe. Yeah, CinemaCon, rather. And so because this processor served her papers in public which, by the way, has happened since the beginning of time. The processors like to do this because they know for a fact that a celebrity will be on a red carpet. Uh, there was a DJ named French Montana who got served at a club because he was making an appearance. When it happens to Olivia Wilde, it is an attack, and it is an attack that can be used to promote her movie. So she gave Citation this needed. statement about being served papers relating to custody over their children. She said, quote, It was my workplace. In any other workplace, it would be seen as an attack. It was really upsetting. It shouldn't have been able to happen. There was a huge breach in security, which is really scary. It's scary. That's very scary when a processor comes to serve you papers. The hurdles that you had to jump through to get into that room with several badges, plus special COVID tests that had to be taken days in advance, which gave you wristbands that were necessary to gain access to the event. This was something that required forethought. Yeah, she's under attack, guys, and yeah, she was really, really scared do. because these papers were handed to her in a professional manner. And like I said, she's not a special snowflake. This has happened many times in the past to celebrities, but it happened to a woman who is also, did I mention, a feminist. She goes on to say, Okay, this I do kind of understand. I get her point here. It is normal to deliver papers that way because you know where the person will be. But Candace is the broken clock that's right twice a day. I hated that this nastiness distracted from the work of so many different people and the studio that I was up there representing. To try to sabotage that was really vicious, but I had a job to do. I'm not easily distracted. Oh, wow. She is just so brave. What a brave feminist woman Olivia Wilde is. 
Now, weigh this against, by the way, Jason Sudeikis' statement, which he gave about the incident, which sounds totally stable. He says, quote, the papers were drawn up to establish jurisdiction. Pardon, this is actually his representative giving the quote. Quote, papers were drawn up to establish jurisdiction relating to the children of Ms. Wilde and Mr. Sudeikis. Mr. Sudeikis had no prior knowledge at the time or place that the envelope would have been delivered, as this would solely be up to the process service company involved, and he would never condone her being served in such an inappropriate manner. Jason also went mm-hmm. on to say the same thing in documents to the court. Uh, he said, essentially, I was horrified to see that she was served in such a public manner, and I deeply apologize for this. He sounds like a normal person. Of course, he had no idea that she was going to be served there, Candace. but this created a very good reason for her to get out into the press and to purport herself to be a victim so that people would buy tickets to her movie, which, by the way, everyone says kind of Both of them. But that wasn't enough because you can take down one man, you know, feminist, you take down one man to get press, but what if you take down two people? Initially, uh, before she cast Harry Styles as the lead in this movie, Don't Worry Darling, she had cast Shia LaBeouf. So Shia LaBeouf has notoriously struggled in the public sphere with alcoholism, with drugs. He's been to treatment centers. Olivia Wilde knows all of this. But the most notorious situation came about when FKA Twigs, his former lover and girlfriend, filed a lawsuit against him claiming uh, that she was being abused. Here we go. Candace on abuse. Now, Olivia Wilde saw this as an opportunity, and since the public didn't know why exactly Shia LaBeouf was no longer in the film and her film was coming out, she basically gave a statement to Variety magazine, uh, which heavily implied that she dropped him because she was, of course, a feminist, and she would never want to condone this sort of person being on her set. She even talks about the ethos. I'm going to make a bold statement and say that doing a TEDx talk is going to be the most transformative and uplifting experience of her set and he just did not go and go in line with the kind of ethos that she wanted to have i thought it was because his story was full of holes (laughs) on this set and so of course the public ate this up and believed this until shyla labeouf came out and he replied to this and he released a letter that he wrote to her in response to the interview that she gave to Variety. Apparently, what she is saying just wasn't true at all. Well, how do you know it wasn't true? Like, why believe him unquestioningly over her? Why believe any of them unquestioningly? You've never met either of them. The truth is, none of us know who's telling the truth because we weren't there. At all. And he even released a video that she sent to him, begging him to stay in the film. First, let's watch the video. Shia. Shia, Shia. I just went riding my horse. I'm very sweaty, but I wanted to reach out because I feel like I'm not ready to give up on this yet. And I, too, am heartbroken, and I want to figure this out. And, you know, I think this might be a bit of a wake-up call for Miss Flo. And I want to know if you're open to giving this a shot with me, with us. If she really commits, if she really puts her her mind and heart into it at this point, and if you guys can make peace, Miss Flo, is that like Aunt Flo? You, I respect hers, but if you guys can do it, what do you think? Is there hope? Is there hope? Will you let me know? Okay, bye. I don't know. Kind of sounds like she's begging Shia to be in the film. And on top of that, when she says Miss Flo, She's referring to Florence Pugh, who was the other lead actress on this movie. And she's sort of throwing her under the bus. Maybe maybe Miss Flo can get her stuff together. This coming, of course, from feminist Olivia begging to a guy to please stay on the film and that hopefully Miss Flo will get her stuff together and make this happen. Yeah, I'll admit this does sound like confusing Hollywood crap. But one or two confusing women does not make all women crazy. This is clearly a Hollywood issue not a woman issue but go on but more importantly i want to read i want to read shyla labeouf's response to olivia in this letter that he wrote to her this email that he sent to her after seeing what she said in variety now again i as i mentioned shyla labeouf has struggled with addiction but he's clean now how do you know and he has been sober for a while now how do you know And he wrote her this email with a lot of clarity, and I think it deserves more airtime. He wrote, Olivia, I hope this finds you inspired, purposeful, fulfilled, and well. 
I pray every night that you and your family have health, happiness, and everything God would give me. No joke, every night before I go to sleep. I have a little girl, Isabel. She is five months old and just beginning to develop the last half of her laugh. It's amazing. Mia, my wife and I have found each other again and are journeying toward a healthy family with love and mutual respect. I have embarked on a journey that feels redemptive and righteous. I write to you now with 627 days of sobriety and a moral compass that never existed before my great humbling that was the last year and a quarter of my life. I reached out to you a few months ago to make amends, and I still pray that one day you can find space in your heart to forgive me for the failed collaboration that we shared. What inspired this email today is your latest variety story. I'm greatly honored by your words on my work. Thank you. That felt good to read. I'm a little confused about the narrative that I was fired, however. You and I both know the reasons for my exit. I quit your film because your actors and I couldn't find time to rehearse. I have included as a reminder the screenshots of our text exchange on that day and my text to Toby. I know that you are beginning your press run for Don't Worry Darling, and that the news of my firing is attractive clickbait, as I am still persona non grata and may remain as such for the rest of my life. But speaking of my daughter, I often think about the news articles she will read when she is literate. And though I owe, and I will owe for the rest of my life, I only owe for my actions. My failings with Twigs, quick break to remind you, Twigs is the ex-girlfriend that filed the lawsuit against him. My failings with Twigs are fundamental and real, but they are not the narrative that has been presented. There is a time and a place to deal with such things, and I am trying to navigate a nuanced situation with respect for her and the truth, hence my silence. But the situation with your film and my, quote, firing will never have a court date with which to deal with the facts. If lies are repeated enough in the public, they become truth. And so it makes it that much harder for me to crawl out of the hole I have dug with my behaviors to be able to provide for my family. Firing me never took place, Olivia. And while I fully understand the attractiveness of pushing that story because of the current social landscape, the social currency that it brings, it is not the truth. So I'm humbly asking as a person with an eye toward making things right, that you correct the narrative as best you can. I hope none of this negatively, negatively affects you and that your film is successful in all the ways that you want it to be. Every blessing to you, Shia. I mean, see, like, like every word of that could be true, but then again, it might not be. Like, we don't know either way, so it's irresponsible for either Candace or me to take either of these people at their word. And I think it's really unsurprising that she's taking the person with the penis at his word and not the person with the vagina. So the responsible position, in my opinion, is to remain neutral unless you have proof. Wow. What a... It's a beautiful letter. It's a beautiful letter, letter from a man that is going through a redemptive process. Uh, he ha found God, actually, on the set of his last film, um, in which he plays a priest, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure, but... He has turned to the Catholic Church and he is speaking about his... Jesus Christ. ...his faith journey. So Shia is a different man today than he was even three years ago. And Candace, I'm not saying Shia is a batterer. I'm not saying he's not. I don't know. I've never met the guy. But you can't just take conversations at face value. Many batterers do the found faith thing in order to look good to the public. Please reserve judgment in both directions, please. And the idea that Olivia would use his struggle to promote her film and also put out this lie that she dumped him because she's feminist AF. I mean, I really think that that illustrates her toxicity. Beyond this, toxicity. and this is notable, the female lead actress, Florence Pugh, refuses to speak to Olivia. She refused, it, she refused to attend all of the press junkets pertaining to the film as it came out and on the actual day that it premiered, which she was contractually obligated to go to the premiere. She did not speak with the press. She did not speak to Olivia. And she was sat a few chairs apart from her so that she never had to engage in her. So there's some disagreement about that. Again, see the video description. Also, even if it is true, that doesn't sound like woman behavior. That's, that's just director behavior. Like, I don't see you flapping your mouth at James Cameron and Michael Bay, but. So apparently this feminist AF person can't even have a productive and respectful relationship with the person that she has cast in her film. Doesn't exactly sound uh, very feminist to me. Not getting along with another person isn't anti-feminist, even if the person's a woman. 
Are you anti-black because you don't get along with literally 90% of other black people? Which then brings me to number four, which is the problematic relationships that she has, of course, dragging her ex into the public sphere, dragging Shia LaBeouf into the public sphere in a negative way. But also, I just want to mention that Olivia is about to be 40. She's 38 years old, and she is now engaged in this relationship with Harry Styles, who is a 28-year-old man. She has two children. Now, I'm not saying that relationships can't work between a woman who is 38 years old and a man who is 28-year-old, but... um, yeah, no, I am. I am saying that they tend not to work. So, so you are saying it. So this is going to be interesting to see. I do not think it's going to work out for her. She, to me, seems to be a woman that is spiraling um, and is being publicly insane. She's Olivia Wilde is not a stable human being, and she needs to be called out for this toxicity. Barely being a cougar is not mentally unstable. Next cultural person who stays in the press, but really, really, I must impress upon you guys that are watching, all she wants is her privacy. Oh, now I know you might think, we okay, well, that seems weird considering she keeps talking about the royal family publicly. She now has a podcast where she is trashing them publicly, and she did this glorious sit-down interview with Oprah to trash the royal family publicly alongside her husband, who should be ashamed of himself. But she does. At the end of the day, Meghan Markle just wants her privacy. And she really follows these same prototypes uh, when we're talking about these women that are just clinically insane. I don't really know a lot about Meghan Markle or that whole situation with the royals, but it's entirely possible to want your public persona to be famous, but not your offstage life to be. Also, it's possible that they're talking about their privacy because that's the only way to make the harassment go away, because maybe being quiet initially didn't work. Again, don't know much about the subject. It's just my alternate take on it. I mean, Meghan Markle, if you didn't know, is a feminist. She is a feminist. In fact, look at this photo of her wearing a feminist necklace. She wants people to know that this is symbolic and that it represents Planned Parenthood and it represents women. And she talks about how much she's a feminist all of the time. But in case you want to know how long Meghan Markle has been a feminist, I must point you to a video of her when she was just 11 years old and featured in a Procter & Gamble commercial. Here she is, Meghan Markle, in her own words, at the age of 11. When we first saw the commercial, I knew something would be done because I was furious. Women are fighting greasy pots and pans. And I said... Wait a minute, how could somebody say that? I think I'll write a letter. So, like, these people don't the even wipe their Procter pots and pans off. Procter & Gamble Company, Cincinnati, Ohio. Dear sir, last week at my school, we decided to watch the news for social studies. While f***ing through the channels, we saw a commercial for the new ivory clear dishwashing liquid. This is the most 90s In thing ever. In the commercial, ever. they said women are battling grease, meaning only women do dishes. When I heard this, the boys in my class started saying, yeah, that's where women belong, in the kitchen. It sounds like the issue wasn't the commercial, but the attitude of the boys in her class. A lot of times people fail to recognize that the problem isn't the commercial or the song or the movie or the phrase, but real people who choose to adopt those messages. So you think, well, if I could just get rid of that commercial, if I could just change the lyrics to that song, etc. <laughs> just, I think my favorite part of that is just, when I saw this commercial, I was furious you're 11 years old. What are, you, what are you talking about? You saw a commercial and you were furious. What 11-year-old do you know even expresses an emotion as, I was furious? I don't know. It's a commonly used word. I'm guessing all of them. No, that's Meghan Markle playing a part. Meghan Markle beginning her early campaign to become eventually a D-list actress that went mm. over to the UK to bag a prince, bring mm. him back so that she could be amongst the A-listers that she never really fit in mm. with. And Candace, whose complaint that white boys' racial death threats left her with an unequal education opportunity, which ended in her winning a nearly $40,000 lawsuit, who also quit going to URI because she didn't get her student loans, who was an anti-Trumper who launched a Kickstarter-funded doxing website, which blew up in her face and became a conservative and a successful celebrity overnight, simply because some famous conservatives ended up hearing about this and promoting her, who now therefore wears a White Lives Matter t-shirt and slags off on any black person who makes a mouse squeak about racism, all so she can live a wealthy lifestyle with her husband, who she got engaged to three weeks after meeting, who is the son of a British lawyer. Lord, and finally join the exact same rank of powerful white douchebag she dumps on Megan for joining? Isn't? 
Yeah, shut the fuck up, Candace. But I mean, no, don't let me tell you too much about her because Meghan Markle will always tell you more about herself and how much of a feminist she is. And in case you didn't get it and it wasn't clear to you, I actually have a list of some quotes from Meghan Markle uh, talking about how feminist she is. She once said, that's what gender equality means for me and having men be a part of that conversation, saying that there's nothing threatening about a woman coming up to the same level. You're giving her also, what she Meghan wants, Markle, the attention. You don't have to play dress up to be a feminist. You are a feminist exactly the way you are. You're making it worse really apply to if Olivia that's what Wilde, it is. Who exclusively likes to dress up and play feminist in pretty skirts. But it does. As long as she's not making others wear them, then it does. Here's another quote from Meghan Markle. Women make up more than half of the world's population and potential. So it is neither just nor practical for their voices, for our voices, to go unheard at the highest levels of decision making. Solid. Another. If I lost it all and oh I my had to start from God. scratch, here's what I do to I get back to, to six God. figures a year in four steps. So I step one, I go God. on Amazon. Megan Marco quote. I think the biggest part of being a girl boss in the office, at home, or anywhere you go, is just knowing your value. Aw, Megan, so pretty, sprinkles and uh, rainbows and all of these good fluffy feelings and buzzwords that actually mean nothing. Why, because they're easy to understand? That actually make women sound stupid. They, this sounds like cartoon language. Feels good, the value of a woman speaking up and men need to join us in our femininity and, and we, we love being women, but we also can be men. So women want to be men because we want the rights that men have. I think Simone de Beauvoir had something to say about that. And, and we can also make a prince run around with his tail in between his legs as I routinely, of course, speaking of toxic relationships, attack his family. Oh my God, Harry's a fucking adult. No one is making him do anything. And you're clearly living under a rock because from day one, Harry has always been the black sheep of that family. Meghan Markle, by the way, is so feminist that she notoriously attacked Kate Middleton. Being feminist doesn't mean you'll have no problems with any other women ever. Knowing fully well that Kate Middleton was not going to be able to respond, of course. The royal family protocol is that they don't engage in the press, they cannot respond at the same level. So she accused his entire family, essentially, of being a racist by refusing to say which family member made the racist comment, but also said, that Kate that's Middleton not, not made saying her cry at her it. own wedding and knew that Kate Middleton would just have to suffer the press talking about her, saying that this indeed happened and she was never going to be able to defend herself. So how- If this was Megan complaining about not being able to go to the press, everybody would be saying what a bitch she was. But since it's Kate, they're like, oh, the poor thing. She can't go to the press. Nobody ever says she chose that life and she didn't like it. It's, come on. How is that? for feminists. How's that for being a wonderful feminist who just wants to support other women? Lady, I don't know. You're, you're these slagging women off just on her. say what they don't She's mean. A woman at the end woman. of the day, they tend to be narcissists, right? Meghan Markle just wants to be an A-lister. Olivia Wilde just wants to make her film popular. She just wants to be in the press and get everybody talking about Don't Worry Darling because she knows the product itself can't speak for itself because it sucks. That's what the reviews, by the way, that's not my opinion. That's actually the reviews that had come out since the Venice Film Festival. That the film is just not that good and you actually shouldn't go see it. But she's hoping that since she's dating the lead actor, Harry Styles, and she's intentionally going out and being seen with him at these fancy restaurants in New York and that photographers are surrounding her and they're interested in her relationship with a man, by the way. How's that feminism? Go find a man to make yourself relevant. She's hoping by stirring Feminists up aren't controversy allowed to be straight. and overly overly using the word feminism that people will just go see the film anyways even though you shouldn't spend one dollar on seeing this film megan similarly that's that's candace that's not that's not feminism that's just hollywood shit i couldn't make it i didn't make it in my procter and gamble commercial i guess that wasn't my big break i made the suits but nobody in america knew who i was so maybe if i again use a man how's that for feminism to make myself relevant and then I accuse everyone else of being a bad person, then maybe I will be elevated to the level that I want to be elevated on. In reality, as I said, these women are narcissistic, they're problematic, and they are women to avoid and not women that we should be putting onto a platform. But Yeah, that may be. But again, it's not a woman or a feminism problem. People can hide behind any political identity in order to be shitty people. You're doing it now. This is the year of the crazy woman. 
So let me tell you, there are going to be more stories. Calling other women crazy does not make you look less crazy in the eyes of men. They're going to call you crazy because you have a vagina. The only difference is leftist men are going to call you crazy and rightist men are going to call left-wing women crazy. And misogynists call all women crazy. You can't escape it. The problem is the misogynists. It's not the politics or the women. It's like this. I talk about it all the time. I am a proud non-feminist for just these reasons because I know <sighs> that feminism is just a word that is being used. There is then literally no evidence it. that there is any equality issues between men and women. Yes, women can are. do every single thing that men can do. Yeah, except, fact, except walk to my car without carrying my keys between my fingers. In most circumstances, women can do more than men can do no. because they are being given positions simply because they're a woman nowadays. Then why aren't men protesting? Right? Because that's the, uh, okay, they want to aspire are, to why equality by just saying, you're a woman, so stand here so we can check the box. There is, again, nothing that is going on in our society, in American society, over in the UK, that indicates that women are suffering because of the patriarchy. This is a made-up nonsense that, that women that are actually crazy love to purport. Yeah, inequality doesn't only happen through law or government, though. Women are more likely to be raped and abused. This happens outside of the law, even without, even without official inequality. So don't allow women to continue to tell you that there is some problem that they're facing because what's really happened is that the early way- wow, wow, wow. So if women are being abused and raped and whatever, paid less than men, whatever the issue is, just don't listen to them. Like, let's just say things were equal. What if things stopped being equal and they became unequal again? Should we just not talk about it ever? Feminism might have actually been something, of course. Women did not actually have the right to vote. Women did not actually have the right to go out into the workplace and to compete with men. But all of that has changed. And it was really the third wave of feminism that allowed for this, you know. Around the 1970s, people started saying, oh, well, now it's about sexual freedom and, and we uh, women want to not just be able to compete with men, we want to... Girl, girl, some of that is true. I, I get what you're saying about the, the economy thing and forcing women to work. I get that. But women didn't want to work to compete with men. We wanted to work to provide for ourselves and have a safety net to count on in case our husbands became controlling or dangerous or died. It's literally survival. Be oh, and women are not trying to be men by having sexual freedom. Like, be men. There's been come on. I mean, the sexual freedom is something that both sexes can desire. Some people do, some people don't, but it's not a male-only thing. And if by sexual freedom you mean irresponsible, objectifying fuck-for-alls, well, men shouldn't be doing that either. So maybe stop calling it a men's thing, okay? been this strange push for women to not just be able to compete with men and be on the same level, but they want to be men. Oh, this goes Jesus back to the reason Christ. that Harry looks so pathetic next to Meghan. She, you can clearly tell that she is wearing the pants in that relationship, that what she says goes, that Harry really has no opinion. He's completely irrelevant. He's just kind of someone that she's plotted alongside her to get to where she wants to go. Yeah, but you're implying that it would be okay if a man was the one wearing the pants, rather than just not having anybody be dominant in a relationship, just not having domination, period. There doesn't always have to be a master and a slave, Candace. Not everybody has a dom-sub slavery fetish like you do. And the results of this, by the way- Sorry for kink shaming. ...way of women acting like men is the reason that I think our society is falling apart, because- we have uh, women that left the household who think that somehow now aspiring to be a stay-at-home mom is wrong and backwards. And instead, we need to go make that. sure that we're chasing being directors of these movies and talking about how more women need to be like us, right? And not feel this. Jesus fucking Christ. It's the perfect product for me. It makes me feel so good. I sleep better. I move. My energy. Feeling more fulfilled. Yeah, but not every woman wants to be a mother. Not every woman can be a mother. Some women want to be mothers and have a career. Some women want careers for fun, others for necessity. Maybe men who become parents shouldn't be caught up in their career either. Maybe both men and women should be spending more time at home. Maybe we should be more reliant on the land and the community, and maybe we'll all have more free time. Maybe capitalism sucks. Maybe just stop talking inside of the household. Because we have these examples, we've allowed the government to play mom. I believe that women- Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. I agree like 100% on that. But big government is a patriarchal contraption, and I think we'd all be happier in smaller local communities. But that's a so-called feminine mindset that you claim you don't like. 
and you keep sucking up to men who are the ones who created the big government in the first place. And I think in, in their Wait. best role, in my best role, is me as a wife and me as a mother. When people ask me that, oh, Candace, who is the best person that you've met? You've met Kanye, you've met former presidents. Like, really, Candace, what is the coolest thing you've ever done? The coolest part of every single one of my days is when I get to go home and I get to be with my children, when I get to create moments with my family. Yeah, any man who's not out of his skull would say the same thing. So why can't men want that too? The coolest position that I get to hold is the CEO of my household, of thinking about all of those things that... What's the salary? ...are going to make my children better into the future. I want to be the kind of mom that actually is engaged in the lessons that her children is learn are learning in school. And because women have been made to feel ashamed of that, women have been told somehow that aspiring to stay at home is bad and dirty and backwards and somehow provides the patriarchy with a wider platform. It's the reason that we have children that are disappearing under leftist doctrines. It's the reason that we're having these arguments today, like about the trans agenda. Women look up and they go, oh my gosh, when did we lose control of our children? When, what? There's a lot of evidence to suggest that traditional gender roles is what caused a lot of the trans stuff. Was it that I became no longer allowed to decide whether or not my child is going to wear a mask in school? When did, when did we get to a, a position where I can no longer decide whether or not I'm comfortable with my child having a vaccine? Well, I'm telling you when it started. It began in the 1970s with the creation of the Department of Education because feminists made this big push. Now, women, it's not enough to be on even keel. You need to go be men. And the government said, ah, what an opportunity for us to grow ourselves. Why don't we federalize the education department? That is true. Why don't we turn textbooks into mommy and daddy, right? Because they're on, they are out of the house. So now there is this hole and we are going to rise up and but fill it. But this is not an argument against feminism. It's an argument against capitalism and against big government. Men should not be detached from the home either. So when you're on TikTok and you're on Instagram and you're wondering, whose child is this, right? That seems to be my reaction when I watch crazy TikTok videos and I, and I see little girls that look to be about 12 years old shaking their butts, trying to get attention. When I see 16 year olds and they're getting tummy tucks and they're getting their nose done and they're getting lip injections and mom is signing off on all of that. And I think how- Yeah, dad's also signing off on all that. Or is the absent dad only okay when conservatives do it? So Cantus doesn't seem to understand that the whole concept of deadbeat dads, deadbeat dads, it's only a thing because it's an offshoot of the house and children are only for women mindset. If you didn't make this big thing about how being home is for women, then maybe men would not run away from the home. How did we get to this society Just a thought. where children don't even know what it means to be a child? I say, it's the empty homes. It's because moms gave up what it meant to be a mother. There are so many Native American tribes, if you read history at all, that did not have the same gender roles we had, and they didn't have all these problems. It's because we somehow felt that we needed to compete, not just compete with men, but to actually be men. Women do not want to be men. Women want the things that men traditionally had, because they make for an easier life for anybody. The fact that jobs take away from family is due to capitalism, not feminism. And if home is so great, everybody should be home, men included. And by the way, if you're wondering where that leads to, if you, if you chase what Olivia Wilde is chasing or what Meghan Markle is chasing, it doesn't make you happy and it doesn't make you whole. The, the most wholesome part of living happens inside the household. All right, so you guys... Yeah, what about women who don't want children or can't have children or want both children and a career or men who want both? Aren't men also fulfilled by children? If not, why are they becoming fathers? Girl, just, I'm done. Have a good night. So if you liked that video, just remember to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.